Lady Mayoress, the Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, members of the Council, Honorary Alderman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the annual meeting of City of York Council. The first item on the agenda, Councillor Paula Widdison, will now propose a motion for the nomination of Lord Mayor. Councillor Widdison. Good morning, and many thanks for this opportunity. I'm delighted to propose Chris Colwick as Lord Mayor, ably assisted by Joy. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. So Chris, having carried out this role with gravitas and compassion during the pandemic, we know you're well practiced and you will be able to deliver even more in less trying times. Chris gained a first in geography from Hull University, studied theology at Oxford, and came to York in 1984 to serve at Michael the Belfry, which is best known for baptizing Guy Fawkes, maybe important of Chris's future in politics. Once established in York, Chris, over a number of years, has set up many charities across the city, including food banks, street angels, and One Voice, along with expanding and delivering many new chaplaincies. After a very busy working life, Chris retired in 2013, but being a glutton for punishment, he was elected as councillor in 2015 and has served the city ever since. During his practice year as Lord Mayor, Chris managed to catch COVID. So Joy stood in for him for a couple of weeks, delivering the civic diary with aplomb. Indeed, there were rumors that Joy was a natural at this role. Joy is a trained and well-respected psychotherapist, and this skill, along with her position as Lady Mayoress, enabled Joy to lead on a number of mental health initiatives for the Civic Party during their practice year. So with a full year ahead, hopefully in less trying times, I am sure Chris and Joy's partnership will serve the city well, as they make yet another great contribution during their mayoral year. With that, I'm happy to propose Chris for Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Widdison. Councillor Michael Pavlovich will now second the motion. Councillor Pavlovich, please. <clears throat> Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, Honorary Alderman, Councillors, Honoured and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to second the nomination of Chris, Councillor Chris Culwick to be the Lord Mayor for the 23-24 civic year. It seems like no time at all that I was standing before you thanking Joy for being such an excellent Lady Mayoress, mainly because it was this time last year. Those of you who have been interested in the history of York's Lord Mayorality, Mayor, Mayor, Mayorality since 2017, we'll know that there have been precedents of someone taking the post within a year of previously having held the role. Indeed, it was common in the Middle Ages. But the most recent similar occurrence I could find was Joseph Terry in 1887 and again in 1890. Chris will join the relatively rare but esteemed ranks of those who have been multiple holders of the role, which include George Hudson, yes, he of the street, who held the role three times in the 19th century, though with considerable gaps in between. More recently, our erstwhile colleague, Councillor Janet Looker, was Lord Mayor three times, including two years in a row from 2019 to 21. Taking office twice in quick succession hasn't happened in nearly 150 years, and then twice in four years shows that it's rare. But then again, we haven't seen civic years so significantly curtailed as we did during the pandemic. Despite the difficulties of lockdown and severely curtailed opportunities for the Civic Party in 21-22, Chris and Joy diligently and with good grace carried, carried out their duties with aplomb, maintaining all the best traditions of the, of the Lord Mayorality. So it's fitting that Chris and Joy get another chance to fully embrace the role for another year in a way they could not before, to fundraise for very worthwhile charities, to represent York and its traditions, and to meet with many thousands of York residents, 
young and old, who will be thrilled to have a visit from the Mayor. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to the role, though another way of looking at it is for being a glutton for punishment. And therefore, it's with great pride that I second this nomination of Councillor Chris Colwick to become the Lord Mayor and first citizen of York. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pavlovich. All those in favour of the motion, please show. Thank you. I declare the motion carried, and Councillor Christopher Culwick has been elected as Lord Mayor of the City of York for the municipal year 2023 to 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lady Mayoress will now exchange the change of office with the incoming Lady Mayoress. Lord Mayor, Councillor Christopher Colwick, will now make his declaration of acceptance of office. I, Christopher Colwick, having been elected to the office of Lord Mayor of the City of York, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof, according to the best of my judgment and ability, so help me God. The Lord Mayor will now take the Oath of Allegiance. I, Christopher Colwick, Lord Mayor of the City of York, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to law. Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, Members of Council, Honorary Alderman, Distinguished Guests, High Sheriff of North Yorkshire, Chair of North Yorkshire County Council, Representatives of the Armed Services, the Police, the Courts, 
York Minster, the universities of York and of York St. John, the guilds of York, representatives of local media, representatives of charities and fundraisers, and officers of the council. Have I had my 15 minutes? <laughs> I stand here with a deep sense of gratitude and recognition of the honour and responsibility entrusted to me as Lord Mayor of York for the next civic year. And I'm humbled by the trust you've placed in me and thank Councillor Widdowson and Councillor Pavlovic for their very kind words. I certainly didn't imagine when I stood here two years ago in very different circumstances that I'd be standing here again today to embark on another civic year. But circumstances were very different then and now. Two years ago, at the height of the pandemic, our annual council in this place was almost a virtual event and only arranged in person at the 11th hour. And what followed was a year of ongoing restrictions, with many of the events and opportunities that would normally and traditionally populate the civic diary not being possible. Thankfully, things have moved on, and the needs of the city today are different. I'll take the opportunity to highlight just one focus we've chosen for the coming months. York is a city of human rights, proudly the first UK city of human rights, and a city of sanctuary, with two universities of sanctuary. But we now have new opportunities and challenges presented with the arrival of refugees and asylum seekers on a scale that was not the case a year or two ago. Not least, but not only through the effects of Putin's brutal war on Ukraine. The Civic Party is committed to play its part in welcoming those who arrive on our doorstep and I'm delighted that Dr. Hamed Khalil, who is chair of York City of Sanctuary, has kindly agreed to be our speaker after the luncheon which follows this meeting. As we will hear, he himself came to York seeking sanctuary and now works with many of those who seek sanctuary here today. And I very much look forward to hearing what he has to say. As for the charities we've committed to supporting through the Civic Year, we have chosen two, both of which the Civic Party are already engaged with, namely Snappy, a local charity dedicated to maximising the personal development of children and young people with wide-ranging disabilities. And secondly, the York Women's Counselling Service, supporting women who need help with one-to-one -one counselling when they need it, for as long as they need it, regardless of their financial circumstances. I welcome the representatives of these charities who are here today and hope you will take the opportunity to meet them and learn more about their work. Along with Joy as Lady Mayoress, who I know will play an important part in the coming year, and without whom I couldn't and wouldn't embark on this, and with Sue Hunter, as sheriff supported by Nigel, we commit ourselves to serve the city in every way we can and to uphold the traditions, dignity, and honor of the civic life of the city of York, a remarkable history which dates back more than 800 years. I thank the Reverend Dr. Vicki Johnson, Canna Presenter of York Minster, who has very kindly agreed to serve as my chaplain, but who cannot be here today unfortunately, as she is accompanying the Minster Choir on its first tour since the pandemic, and as we speak, they are on their way to the Netherlands. I also thank the Reverend Liz Hassel, priest in charge of the York City Centre Churches, who has agreed to serve as Sheriff's Chaplain. Thank you. Finally, I want to pay tribute and honour the memory of Andrew Digwood who, as we will all remember, stood down as under-sheriff this time last year, and then only months later, died after a short illness, leaving Helen and their young family. Thank you, Andrew. 
we miss you. It is a privilege we all share to serve this wonderful city we are proud to call home. And I look forward to working with all of you for the good of the city in the coming year. Thank you. I'm also going to take this opportunity to thank our outgoing Lord Mayor, David Carr, and Linda, the Lady Mayoress. Delighted to propose a vote of thanks. David and Linda have certainly had an extraordinary year as Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress. The number of significant national and local events which have taken place during their morality must mark out their civic year as a once in a generation event. I know David will say a little more about this shortly. Over the year, I've attended a number of events where they have been present in their official capacity, and I must say I've been impressed by the speeches David has delivered. He's always been well prepared and confident in his delivery. It tells me he composes them himself. I'm sure he does. An important part of being Lord Mayor is, of course, the support of charities, both in attracting donations to the Lord Mayor's own charitable fund and supporting other charities. And through this last year, the Lord Mayor's fund has taken a slightly different form in being a fund to support the cost of living crisis, a fund which is yet to be distributed to a number of charities across the city. A notable example, a notable example of the Lord Mayor's own appeal was the golf day. There are some in the room we're very familiar with that event held at the Pike Hills Golf Course, raising a significant sum, and is a great example of the way in which volunteers and participants make these things possible. Without them, it would not be. And again, a notable example of supporting other charities, Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress's participation in a takeoff of Strictly Come Dancing, Strictly St. Leonard's, only last month where David and Linda performed, I'm told, a passable waltz. What happened after that, I'm still unsure of. So David and Linda will not only be stepping down from this role, but David will be stepping down uh, from public life. I've known David for all of his eight years on the City of York Council. Uh, I know that among colleagues, he's well-liked, respected, and has, to the very best of his ability, tried to work with the political spectrum, as well as with officers we will miss him. Thank you, David. So David and Linda return to a more private life. I'm sure we will wish them well. It's my privilege to move this vote of thanks to the outgoing Right Honourable there, Lord Mayor David Carr and his wife, Linda, the Lady Mayoress, for the service they have given to the city of York over the last year. I so move. We move to the second. Thank you. <laughs> Here I am. I am the seconder. Uh, Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, members of the Council, Honorary Aldermen, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Councillor Claire Douglas, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm leader elect of the Council. It's my privilege to second the vote of thanks to the outgoing Right Honourable Lord Mayor of York, David Carr 
to say that David and his wife Linda have had an eventful year as Lord Mayor and Lord, uh, Lady Mayoress must be, as we all know, a monumental understatement. David will describe his year as Lord Mayor in more detail, but we must all agree that his mayoral year has been hallmarked by a series of events of momentous significance for both the nation and our city of York. I've attended a number of civic events with David and Linda, and I've received feedback from many other sources that affirm that David and Linda have conducted their year in office with a supreme combination of dignity and humanity. They've also had a constant and careful eye on the civic budget at a time when so many of York's residents are finding it very hard to make ends meet. My personal observation is that, and this isn't um, to denigrate the current Lord Mayor, the, uh, the young incoming, that David fits the mayoral robes perfectly. And I don't think we've seen any Lord Mayor for a number of years look quite so comfortable in the role. David is not only stepping down as Lord Mayor, but is also stepping down completely from public life. In his relatively short period of eight years on the City of York Council, he has held three great offices of the Council, Executive Member for Housing and Community Safety, Leader of the Council and Lord Mayor. Just one of those would have been a worthy achievement, but to fill all three roles is a remarkable record of public service. David and Linda will now regain their private lives and spend time traveling and enjoying the company of their two rapidly growing grandchildren, Noah and Amelie. Are they here today? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. <laughs> Who have attended and been involved in many of the civic events during the past year. They are an absolute credit to their family. It's been a pleasure to see them involved in civic life. They will have an incredible store of memories to look back on when Grandad and Grandma were Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress of York. I, and I'm sure all of us, wish them all well. And so, on that note of hope for the future, I send Lin David, Linda and their family my personal best wishes and thanks, and I'm honoured to second this formal vote of thanks to the outgoing Right Honourable Lord Mayor of York, David Carr, and his wife Linda, the Lady Mayoress. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we move to item two on the agenda, the ceremony for the appointment of the Sheriff of York. I understand Councillor Fenton will now propose a motion for the appointment of Sheriff. Councillor Fenton. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, Henri Alderman, Council Members, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am pleased to propose my friend Sue Hunter, the Sheriff of York, for the municipal year 2023-24. to I've had the pleasure of serving alongside Sue during her eight years as a councillor for Westfield Ward between 2015 and May of this year, and I've got to know her as a friend as well as a colleague. I know that Sue has all the qualities that will make her ideally suited to the role of sheriff. Sue is York born and bred, spending her early years in Lindley Street off Acombe Road before the family moved to Acombe Green. Sue's two sons, Jimmy and Andrew, were brought up in Acombe and attended local schools. Sue's focus during those years was on raising her family, though she did work for a number of local firms before setting up her own business. Uh, something that I think the next speaker will talk about in a bit more detail. In these kinds of speeches, there's usually a bit about hobbies and interests uh, of the, of the, the sheriff-elect, uh, and, and this speech will be no different. But the, the hobby of Sue's that I'll mention is, is really quite different to the usual anecdotes about gardening or running or reading or cinema. Um, and that is that in the, the 1990s, Sue was a very dedicated and very successful bodybuilder. So much so <clears throat> that she won the Miss York and the Miss Yorkshire body, bodybuilding crowns. Uh, and I've seen the photographs, and, and very impressive. Um, this does suggest that Sue has the, the stamina and the strength needed for the role of sheriff. Um, and maybe this year, the usual um, civic party golf matches or bowls tournaments could be supplemented with some form of, I don't know, some strength-based challenge, the arm wrestling. Um, well, that would probably rule me out of contention. 
Um, during her time as councillor, I saw Sue's interaction with residents firsthand and her commitment to helping pe people through often challenging situations. Um, locally, she was involved in establishing the, the Westfield Wednesdays initiative, which provided an opportunity for residents to get together for a chat, uh, for a cuppa, and to get help and advice. The ability to, to empathise and put people at ease, whatever the situation, is a skill that Sue has in abundance, and one which I'm sure will serve her very well <clears throat> in her year as sheriff. I'm sure that Sue and her partner Nigel will have a very successful year, and I look forward to supporting the whole Civic Party and their chosen charities in any way that I can. So I'm very happy to propose Sue Hunter as Sheriff of York for the municipal year 2023-24. to Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fenton. I understand that Councillor Rowley will now second the motion. Councillor Rowley. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, members of the Council, Honorary Alderman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. When I received a phone call from Sue last week asking if I would second her for the position of Sheriff, um, I gave an immediate yes as my answer. I've known Sue in various capacities over the years, and more recently as a councillor colleague. I can remember as a fresh new councillor four years ago, uh, Sue was one of the familiar faces that uh, made me feel very welcome and helped me find my way around. And for those new councillors in the room today, I'm sure there'll be others that will help you in such a, a way uh, as you try to uh, navigate your way through your first few weeks and months as an elected member. For the last 10 years, I've known Sue as the proprietor of Floral Elegance in Acombe. Where as a business, she's recently celebrated her 20th anniversary. And I've enjoyed an excellent working relationship with her in my capacity as a funeral director. She has many qualities that she brought to her business that will serve her well in the role of Sheriff of York. She's a people person, used to dealing with every occasion. I guess rising to the challenge is part of everyday life for Sue. Whether it's a request for an over-elaborate floral tribute for a funeral or a would-be bride wanting her wedding venue to look like the front cover of Hello! magazine. We recently witnessed her can-do attitude when a client of ours wanted a poppy wreath made of actual poppies, not the paper ones that we see on Remembrance Days. As some of you will know, now is not the season for poppies. But undeterred, she agreed to sort it out for us. A quick visit to Amazon had silk poppies delivered and the job completed without a fuss. One of the duties of the Sheriff of York was to maintain law and order. And we witnessed this recently when some disgruntled individual decided to throw eggs at His Majesty the King on his very first trip to York as monarch. Who can forget the current sheriff then reverting to type and turning to the crowd and demanding to know, Oi! Who threw that? Sue, likewise, I'm sure, will take no nonsense. <laughs> She's shown herself to be a committed community leader in her time as a City of York councillor. Someone who understands, cares, and wants to make a difference. All these qualities will stand her in good stead over the next 12 months, and it's my honor and privilege to second my friend, Susan Hunter, as the next Sheriff of York. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. All those in favor, please show. I'm sure that's unanimous. Thank you very much. I declare the motion carried, and Susan Hunter has been appointed as Sheriff of the City of York for the municipal year 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Sheriff's Consorts will now exchange civic chains. Sheriff Susan Hunter will now make her declaration of acceptance of office. I, Susan Hunter, having been appointed to the office of Sheriff of the City of York, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability. Sheriff Susan Hunter will now take the oath of allegiance. I, Susan Hunter, Sheriff of the City of York, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, to his heirs and successors according to law. Listening to those, oh. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff's Consort, members of the Council, Honorary Aldermen, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for choosing me to be your Sheriff for the Civic Year 2023-24. I am honoured and humbled to be taking on a post that dates back more than a thousand years as Sheriff for the City of York. I would like to express my thanks to Councillors Fenton and Rowley for their wonderful nominations and kind words. As you heard from Councillor Fenton, this isn't the first position I've held in the City of York, as I did used to be a bodybuilding Miss York. You wouldn't think so now, but years ago, hide, robes hide quite a lot. Thankfully, this new and more prestigious position means I can wear more clothes and a lovely robe. York is the only home I know. My grandparents were born here, my mother was born here, I was born here, and I've never left. Why would I want to? The city is so very special in my history and in the history of the United Kingdom. It is the home to many traditions, including the Civic Party, of which I'm thrilled now to be part of, and I will undertake my role with the respect it deserves. I would like to thank Chris and Joy again for asking me to join them in this forthcoming civic year. I would like to thank Councillor Andrew Waller for getting me involved in this councillor business in the first place. And I give my sincere thanks to my partner Nigel for agreeing to be by my side as Sheriff's Consort. He already has a lot to put up with with me and I'm extremely grateful for his continued support. I would also like to thank Susie Mercer our outgoing sheriff for her dedication to the role, for showing me how it's done and for giving me the confidence in taking on this role. And at this point, I must also apologize to her for missing the coronation ball a couple of weeks ago. I'm afraid I had a date in Dublin with Bruce Springsteen and as he's the boss, he called. I would also like to thank my family and friends, especially my son James and Andrew, who have been through with me through thick and thin my son Andrew has travelled up today from uh, Norfolk and I'm so proud that he's here with me. James sadly can't be with us again because he's in Amsterdam. Bruce Springsteen's won again. He's seen his concert tonight. I'll have to have a word with that boss. 
This is going to be a very exciting year, and I look forward to inviting you all in joining me in supporting our charities and having fun along the way. I already have a few Halloween ideas in the offing, so make sure you get your costumes ready. As the Lord Mayor has mentioned our charities, Snappy Trust, who provide play and provision for children with special needs, is one of our chosen charities. They deliver fantastic care and opportunities for those who need it, and I am proud to have served as one of their trustees. I look forward to more fun and fundraising in the year ahead with them. And I also know that your Women's Counselling, our second charity, is very close to Joy's heart and look forward to working with those as well. Thank you, councillors, for confirming me today. I am honoured to be Sheriff of York and will carry out my duties with energy, enthusiasm, dignity, and if I don't, feel free to come and tell me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we come to item three on the agenda, that is the appointment of the Deputy Lord Mayor. I move that Councillor Keith Orrell be elected as Deputy Lord Mayor of the City of York for the Municipal Year 2023-2024, and Councillor Eyre will now second. Thank you, Councillor Eyre. All those in favour of the motion? Again, I think that's unanimous. Deputy Lord Mayor will now make his, his declaration of acceptance. I, Keith Orrell, having been elected to the office of Deputy Lord Mayor of the City of York, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully ful fulfil the duties thereof, according to the best of my judgment and ability. The Deputy Lord Mayor, Keith Orrell, will now take the oath of allegiance. I, Keith Orrell, Deputy Lord Mayor of the City of York, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to the law. So help me God. Thank you, Councillor Oral. I think it's a rare thing that the City of York Council with 47 members at this point only has two who have experience of serving as Lord Mayor, ourselves, and only one other with uh, experience of serving in civic office, namely uh, Councillor Ashley Mason, who served as Sheriff uh, prior to this. What I didn't say at the beginning, but I will say now, is welcome especially to all those who are new members of the council. I really hope that you enjoy today and make full use of uh, all of the uh, opportunities that today will bring for you. Item four on our agenda, uh, we move the appointment of the under sheriff and I invite Sheriff uh, Hunter please to uh, name her, her under sheriff for the forthcoming civic year 20. 23-2024. I have great pleasure in naming Karen Phoebe as our under sheriff and wish to express my thanks to her for undertaking this office. Thank you. And thank you to Karen. We move, move to the presentation of the badges of office, which is item five of our agenda. First, the Lord Mayor will now present the outgoing Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress with their badges of office.
So now you get to make your speech. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, Members of the Council, Honorary Alderman, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Thank you to you, Lord Mayor, the new Lord Mayor, Colwick, and to you, prospective Leader of the Council, Councillor Douglas, for the vote of thanks earlier on, and for your kind words. I wish you both every success in your respective roles going forward. Well, what a year it's been. Two monarchs, three prime ministers, a jubilee, a coronation, and two visits to York from the King, all in the 12 months of my mayoralty. With the restoration last year of normal life post-COVID, my year as Lord Mayor has seen a veritable explosion of civic events. A huge number of organizations, guilds, societies, charities, clubs, and a huge range of commercial concerns were anxious to restore normal life, normal meetings, normal banquets and dinners. And overlaid on all that have been the events connected with the monarchy, the Platinum Jubilee for the Queen, the late Queen, last June, the sad death of the Queen in September, the proclamation of a new monarch, and the two visits of the King to York, the first last November, and the second, more recently, for Maundy Thursday in April. An annis mirabilis, a year of wonder, a year of all years. Linda, the Lady Mayoress, my wife, and I have met and conversed with the King twice. We've met archbishops, deans, ambassadors, lord lieutenants, and high sheriffs, judges and generals, guild masters and governors, chancellors and vice chancellors, professors, charity leaders, captains of industry and entrepreneurs, and many, many other mayors and civic leaders. And we've also met the quiet heroes, those who mop up after us in every sense of that phrase, those who look after the frail and the fading the frightened and the abused. Whether that fear and abuse comes from nature, from war, from family and partners, or from an increasingly dispassionate corporate world. And we've met those quiet heroes who care for those to whom our brief existence on this planet makes little or no sense at all. And we've been pleased to pay homage to those other heroes, our war heroes, remembering the fallen and attending the funerals of those veterans who fought, but who, like my father, were lucky enough to survive action and return home. We've been humbled and moved by it all. The spontaneous affection and goodwill shown to us by residents and visitors to the city alike the hundreds of messages of gratitude we've received from those who we've met and supported. It's all been truly humbling and very, very moving. And talking of thanks, I want to express our gratitude to the Council's civic office and security teams and to the Mansion House team for all their incredible support through what has been an incredibly busy year. Now, we've often been asked what the highlights of our mayoral year have been. In many ways, the whole year has been one great highlight. But if I were to pick out half a dozen high spots, they would be these. Numbers one and two, the visits of the King to York and our visit in return to Buckingham Palace. Number three, the Kahima Memorial Service last July in the Dean's Garden. I defy anyone not to be moved to tears by the contrast between the somber wreath laying by a frail veteran of that battle and the contrast of the warm summer sunshine 
with the birds singing overhead in the trees. Number four, the very moving and dramatic vigil for Ukraine, which took place at the Minster on the 24th of February to mark the first anniversary of the Russian invasion. Rachel Maskell, the MP for York Central, and I read out alternate verses of Psalm 31 as two verses. I think it's called antiphone. And that two verses, that two voices, was underlain by quiet organ music and with a shower of rose petals descending from inside the tower. A spectacular piece of theater and an extremely moving service. Number five, the visit to Hoping Kitchen, giving meals out to the homeless at Exhibition Square. Homeless in 21st century Britain on a freezing cold night last November. And number six, taking the 21-gun salute as inspecting officer to mark the coronation of King Charles III earlier this month, followed by lunch at Infal Barracks, all with our precious grandchildren at our side. But as I say, every event has been a highlight, and I do not wish to diminish in any way the significance of any event by not including them in that list. I also want to make a brief mention of our charity activities, holding events in aid of the Lord Mayor's charitable appeal, notably, as the new Lord Mayor has already mentioned, my golf day, which raised over £5,000 on its own. And no small thanks there are due to the organisers, Graham Bradbury and Gary Dunn, and a huge gratitude to Martin Rowley for his sponsorship. And also our participation in the events in aid of other charities. And I can confirm, Chris, our performance at Strictly St. Leonard's was, how shall I put it, unplaced. <laughs> Nevertheless, thanks to superb organisation and some incredible dancing by the other couples there, we helped to raise over £22,000 from that one event alone. But I have to say, all this sweeping panorama of experiences has taken place against a background of economic hardship, a cost of living crisis, where many are finding it hard to make ends meet. Against a background of international tensions, with yet another dictator strutting his miserable and destructive stuff in Europe, again. And against a background of an environmental crisis threatening to engulf us all, and which will dwarf all our other problems. During my mayoralty in November 2022, to be precise, according to a report by the United, according to a report by the United Nations, the world's population reached the eight billion mark. I'm just going to break for a drink. Speech making is thirsty work. I'll start that again. During my mayoralty in November 2022, to be precise, according to a report by the United Nations, the world's population reached the eight billion mark. In 1973, when I left university 50 years ago, the world's population was four billion, doubled in 50 years, in less than my lifetime. In that same 50-year period, it is estimated by eminent, eminent ecologists, notably at the University of California, Berkeley, that global wildlife populations have crashed by 70%. And a third report by the IPCC only last week states there is a more than 50-50% chance of global temperatures breaching the all-important threshold of 1.5 degrees warming by 2027, a mere four years away. Let those numbers sink in, ladies and gentlemen. They point to an exist existential threat for humankind. We are at a crossroads. Climate change, loss of habitats, pollution of the oceans, ecological and wildlife systems 
are no longer changing. They're collapsing, and we will with it. Never before in the life of the planet has one single species, us, been responsible for such destruction on Earth. But despite all that, I remain optimistic. I believe a new generation of younger politicians will emerge, which, unlike my generation, growing up in the desolation following the Second World War, will not be obsessed with relentless consumption, or to give it another name, economic growth, and who will have the wisdom and the knowledge to convince us to take a more frugal, harmonious, and caring path. And I will be doing my bit to make room for this new generation by today stepping down completely from public life. As Councillor Douglas has said, I've held the three big offices at the City of York Council, Cabinet Member, Council Leader, and Lord Mayor. It doesn't get any better than that, and I'm therefore bowing out at the top. Linda and I now intend to take a long break over the summer to enjoy the company of our family and to reflect on our annus mirabilis as Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress of this great and ancient city of York. Thank you. Thank you. We come now to the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to the outgoing Sheriff and Sheriff's Consort. And I understand Councillor Oral will now, uh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself, aren't I? Councillor Mason will now propose a vote of thanks to the outgoing Sheriff and Sheriff's Consort. Councillor Ashley Mason. Thank you, David, for setting the bar so high. I think I'll need that gin and tonic you've got there. Uh, Lord Mayor, Lady Meris, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, Members of Council, Honorary Alderman, High Sheriff, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased to be proposing a vote of thanks to the outgoing sheriff, Susie Mercer. York is very fortunate to be one of only a handful of cities to still retain the right to appoint its own sheriff. So the person in the role has to not only value its traditions and its history, but use the office in such a way as to keep it relevant for modern society. Susie has just done that. Her focus on raising money, for her, uh, raising money to support the cost of living appeal has been a key theme of her year using her role as sheriff to fundraise and bring people together. This has included a range of events, with one such fresh new idea being the Halloween ghost walk and spooky cocktails at the Mansion House. Her efforts have meant that thousands of pounds have been donated and will help local people struggling with food and fuel poverty here in York. As already said, the office of sheriff is the oldest office under the crown still in existence, well over a thousand years old. Uh, and predating mayors by some time. The sheriff is defined in law now as a local officer of dignity, and Zuzi has carried out her duties in such a manner, dignified, diligent, polite, and clearly caring. She has enormously valued the people she's met and supported during her time in office, including the charity workers, volunteers, and community heroes that she's recognized during civic visits. She's developed many friendships during the year, which she hopes will continue to flourish. The sheriff, by tradition, was the link between the sovereign and the people, and Susie has embraced the many royal celebrations and occasions that have fallen within her year. From the wonderful Platinum Jubilee and celebrations and street parties, through to the passing of our late queen and proclamation of a session on the Mansion House steps, through now to the coronation and those festivities. York has been honored with two royal visits during the King and Queen Camilla's reign, uh, and I'm sure when David was looking for a Shereval nominee, he didn't consider Susie's pedigree for ping pong. However, her batting skills did come into action, as already alluded to, defending His Majesty from the volley of eggs. She also very much enjoyed the Maundy Thursday service and the chance to speak with so many volunteers who'd worked hard and given voluntary service to their community. On the theme of church services, Susie enjoyed the many services she attended, especially the music. 
She joked that the hymns brought back memories of sitting in school assemblies. It's clear she's had a really enjoyable year, overcoming challenges to make the most of her role with a clear focus on charity. York has been lucky to have such a caring sheriff. If I may indulge counsel just a little, I'd like to give my best wishes to the incoming Civic Party. I know the Lord Mayor will be a great ambassador for York and provide the unique apolitical civic leadership that the people of York and its organisations greatly value. To quote, a former leader, a quote, oh gosh, to quote a former Labour leader turned sheriff, for those people who are new to council or are cynical about the office, I've always been cynical about it, especially as a politician, until I did the role. Actually, there's great power in going along to events to say thank you to people who are going around doing what they're doing, to celebrate the many successes of things going on in and around the city, and to have someone come up and say thank you for what you're doing. There's real power, and that's something everyone in public life should celebrate. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mason, and indeed, Councillor Orrell will now second that motion. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, <coughs> Members of Council, Honorary Alderman, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First Lord Mayor, may I congratulate you on your office. I'm sure your Civic Party will have a great year, hopefully, this time without any interruption by plague or pestilence. I'm delighted that Susie has asked me to say a few words about her year as Sheriff. To add to the detail that Councillor Mason has just described. Councillor Mason referred to the many things you, you've done over, over the year, so I'll be brief. Susie, your Civic Party started the year stressing the importance of tradition for our city. Two weeks ago, in one of your final events, you reinforced this in spectacular, spectacular fashion. Over 200 people gathered in this room to continue York's tradition of celebrating a coronation. But this time, tradition with a purpose. Thousands of pounds were raised for charity that evening. As we've heard today, civic parties regularly raise tens of thousands of pounds each year for charity, and it's sometimes forgotten between mayor-making ceremonies. At the same time, they provide enjoyment and entertainment for communities across our city. So the brilliant Ask staff arranged for your 200 guests to sit and dine here and then enjoy the music of the band that you had organized. But you did forget one thing that affected Judith and myself. Our taxi driver arrived a bit late flustered and very agitated. Sorry I'm late, he said. I've been laid, delayed by some military maneuvers in Blake Street. There's a lot of people in uniform there, so I'll have to take you a different way, which he did quite circuitously. And we finished up coming up Coney Street and being dropped off at the mansion house. This is the nearest I can get you, he said. Still quite worried and agitated, and we wondered what was happening. We were puzzled at what military operation could be happening in Blake Street. When we walked into Blake Street, it was a military operation, well, of sorts. The York Waits were there in their uniforms to welcome everyone. Taxi drivers apart, Susie. It was a magnificent evening that couldn't have happened without your determination and skill in organizing the event and ensuring so many people came. You were, of course, ably assisted by your service consort, Rebecca, who's been such an important aid to you throughout your year. Thank you for everything you've done, Susie. I'm delighted to second this vote of thanks.
So thank you. And all those in favour, please show. The motion is carried. The Lord Mayor will now present the outgoing Sheriff and Sheriff's Consort with their badges of office. Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, Sheriff, Sheriff's Consort, members of the Council, Honorary Aldermen, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Councillors Mason and Oral, for your very kind words. You'll be pleased to know this is very short. Well, what a year that was. The 22-23 municipal year must be regarded as one of the most significant in recent history. We have enjoyed so many events and made some firm friends along the way, but the standout engagements must be the 42-gun salute to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee at the Museum Gardens, sadly the Queen's demise in September, the proclamation of the new King, followed by His Majesty's visits to the city, firstly to unveil the statue of the late Queen, and secondly, the Royal Maundy. Being presented to His Majesty at Micklegate Bar by the Lord Lieutenant was an incredible experience. After realizing what was happening regarding the debacle of the egg throwing, I endeavored to protect their majesties as a good sheriff should, and actually caught two of them. A lady in the crowd asked if I played cricket. Following that, my efforts were noted in the local and national press. I also became something of a YouTube star. Who would have guessed? I have been delighted to be able to organize several of the charity events for the Lord Mayor and Sheriff's Charitable Fund, and also sheriff-specific civic events, some of which were the Assize of Ale, a medieval custom which traits back to 1396, when the sheriff, supported by sergeants enlisted on the day, undertakes the difficult and onerous task of visiting various hostelries to taste the quality of the beer to ensure that it is up to standard. The Sheriff's Riding, which takes place each year on the 21st of December, winter solstice, where all manner of whores, thieves, dice players, and other unthrifty folk are, following a proclamation, allowed within the city walls for the 12 days of Yule, provided they behave themselves. We held a fabulous fundraising night at Orchid Vegan, and I must pay a special tribute to Wills Young, not only for the excellent food and hospitality that we enjoyed, but also for his great generosity in donating to the fund. There was a Halloween event where guests enjoyed a conducted ghost walk, followed by spooky cocktails and canapes back at the mansion house, during which two ballet dancers performed a ghostly choreography to a world premiere of the music. There were several others, but the jewel in the crown must be the Sheriff's Coronation Charity Ball held at the Assembly Rooms, which followed the format of a similar event held in 1953 to mark Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Following a mention in Time Out magazine as one of the top 12 things to do on coronation weekend, we had local, national, and international visitors one gentleman traveling all the way from Dallas specifically to attend, and a couple from Pittsburgh who had extended their trip in order to be there. This just goes to show how revered the Civic Party is, not only locally and nationally, but internationally. It is a great pity that more isn't made of the Civic Party for promoting York as a must-go-to destination. <clears throat> as the second city to London, we should be proud of our heritage and promote the mayoralty its customs and traditions whenever and wherever we can. Sadly, not enough is made of the Civic Party and it would be a great shame and a detriment to the city if it were not preserved and enhanced. 
I would like to say a special thank you to Councillor Mason for all his help and advice in putting together the Coronation Ball. Without you, it would not have been the great success that it was. There were a great many other people involved in putting it together and all played their part with great enthusiasm and professionalism, and I thank you all. I would also like to thank my consort, my daughter, for being with me on this incredible journey. It has been an honour and a privilege to serve the City of York as its Sheriff for the past year, and I know that the Shrievalty is in good hands with your newly elected Sheriff. Thank you. It has been amazing. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. So, item six, we come to the formal business of this meeting, namely the appointment of a council leader, the allocation of places and councillors' committees and other bodies for 2023-2024. You'll find all the details of proposed appointments are shown uh, in the published papers for the meeting. In addition, uh, there are some updates to committee memberships which have been circulated to members and have been made publicly available prior to this meeting. Can I please ask for nominations to the position of council leader? Thank you very much, Councillor Kilbane. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Thank you very much, Councillor. Thank you. I can see uh, we need a show of hands. Uh, will you please indicate if you are willing to uh, support that nomination of Councillor Douglas is um, uh, to be uh, shown, if you will, raise your hands. Thank you very much. Please put your hands down. Uh, can I ask those who wish to vote against that, please, to indicate by a show of hands? Can I therefore record any abstentions, please, by a show of hands? The nomination of Councillor Douglas is therefore carried. She's duly appointed as elected leader of City of York Council for 2023-2024. Congratulations. Councillor Douglas. I will now ask her to move the remaining formal business for the allocation uh, of places to uh, members, to committees, other bodies for 2023-24 to move the recommendations in the Monitoring Office re Report to Council in full as set out in the published papers and updated in the supplementary agenda. If I may briefly interject, Lord Mayor, Please do. Um, there is a substitution of a word within one of the recommendations. If members would like to turn to paragraph 36, 4, on page 8 of the papers, On the second line, the word allocations should read appointments. Thank you. With that said, Councillor Douglas. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Kilbane. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak on the motion? Thank you, members. I will now move to vote. For all those wishing to vote for the motion, please show your hands now. Again, I think we need a count, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Those wishing to vote against the motion, please show. 
And if you'll indicate by a show of hands if you are abstaining. Thank you, members. The motion is carried. There being no further business for the meeting, I now declare the meeting closed and invite members and their guests to remain with us for a civic reception. Await further instructions. All rise. <laughs>